Uh, hey there, welcome to The New Normal. This is uh, Bebop Technologies weekly webinar series. Uh, and this week we're gonna be showing off something super cool and brand new. Uh, it's a uh, working title. Right now it is in, uh, it's in a, a public preview setting uh, uh, for people that have uh, Bebop software and our Bebop client. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about this new feature that uh, we've been developing for a while and is uh, a pretty, pretty significant and exciting game changer, uh, particularly with regards to our Bebop Rocket uh, file transfer service. Uh, and we're calling it Bebop Link uh, for right now. That's the working title. Uh, joining me today, I'm John Conroy. I'm Bebop's uh, VP of Communications and Market Development. Uh, I will let my colleagues introduce themselves, uh, Patrick and Sim and Brian. And you're all on mute. Cool. Sim? Hello, everyone. Sim and Battaglia, the VP of Engineering, um, godfather of the software, here to build cool stuff for you guys. Build cool stuff. That's what I want on this card. Uh, Patrick? Hi, I'm Patrick Cooper. I'm the VP of Product Management at Bebop. Cool. And Brian? Hey, I'm Brian Bedell. I'm part of the customer success team uh, here to help uh, creatives transition into working in the cloud. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, guys. Um, Patrick, why don't I start off with you? Um, from a, a product development standpoint, wh what are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, so as you led off with, we're, we're talking about Bebop Link. Um, and kind of from a high level, what this is, it's a feature that reduces the friction associated with getting content into Bebop. Um, it really kind of streamlines the efforts needed to obtain content, and especially from contributors who do not have subscriptions to the Bebop platform. Previously, you either needed to uh, upload content via the software client or via a object storage from a, a cloud service provider to get content into Bebop. This kind of allows a new way of uploading content directly into Bebop. Right. So, uh, so for data wranglers that you know that are ordinarily maybe taking enormous amounts of footage. Uh, from camera and putting them into uh, the cloud or into their workflows on-prem or both, um, they would still be using Rocket uh, the same way that they already do. But with Bebop Link, uh, they would have the capability of, um, you know, I, I know we're going to talk about some potential use cases, but theoretically, if it's an organization that would be, uh, for whatever reason, needing to crowdsource content and having people on the ground, uh, I could see it certainly having a lot of relevance for news organizations. When there's a big event happening, you could have a number of reporters on the ground that are sending footage from their cameras directly uh, into uh, Bebop for editorial and, and visual effects and so forth um, directly through a link without having to log into software. And they could be doing it from any device, right? Absolutely. So essentially, like what DropLink is at a little bit more granular level, it's essentially a way for a user on the Bebop platform to set up a web URL which contains an upload link to, uh, that goes directly to fast shared storage on the Bebop platform. Um, this web URL can be shared easily via you know, email, text, chat, whatever you need. Um, and it essentially allows individuals to securely upload content directly to Bebop from any device that has a mobile browser or a web browser in it. Um, and I think it's kind of also important to, to point out, just kind of give people a little more clear understanding of how this works. So you can only set up a drop link if you are a Bebop subscriber and you're on the Bebop platform, but then anyone that you allow to have access to that link can then use that link to then upload content, whether they're inside your organization or outside your organization or on Bebop or not on Bebop. That's super cool. So talk to us a little bit about the, the product development. Uh, you can give us a flavor for our product development process, but also about why we created this specific feature. You know, what, what was the need? What did we identify? Um, and, and who did we really develop this for? So I would say that this is certainly, the, the Bebop link is certainly in service of serving our mission to enable collaboration in the M&E space. Um, and all of the features that we develop, all of the, the, the great additions to the Bebop platform, they always come from uh, the conversations that we're having every day with our customers and our prospects, like really understanding what are their workflows, how do they need things to work, um, et cetera. And then that sort of, helps us get insight into, okay, what do we need to do to best serve those workflows? And so this drop link, uh, uh, Bebop, Bebop link is very much in line with other collaboration functionality that we've developed for the platform. And I would lump in with that certainly Rocket, which is actually the engine that essentially powers the data transfer. It's the data transfer protocol component mm -hmm. of uh, Bebop link, uh, as well as OTS or over the shoulder, which is our uh, real-time 
review and approve solution. Excellent. That's super cool. Well, um, we could talk about it forever, but I think it's a lot more interesting if uh, we actually uh, get to see it a little bit. So Sim, why don't sure. I bounce it over to you and, um, and any other context that you want to add to what Patrick and I just talked about as far as, you know, the genus or the, the, the brainstorm that, um, that created this technology. Um, have at it. Sure. Um, so, you know, it, it all started with moving files around and I wanted to really reduce that, right? Um, we're all tired of just copying, pasting and, and moving and this pro provides a really elegant solution to get the content where you really want to get to and start working on it right away, right? Uh, so that's, that's where it all um, started from. And as Patrick mentioned, this, uh, the underlying platform is Rocket. So mm -hmm. it scales really well, right? So uh, we can scale with servers. So if you have a huge concert going on and you want everybody in your audience to send content to you so the editor can start working on, uh, on the workstation, yeah. this is ready to do that. This is ready to accept that content at that scale, right? So this mm -hmm. is really uh, cool from that perspective. So let's see it. Uh, let me yeah. share my screen. And while you're bringing that up, um, to the point that you just mentioned with concerts, because when, when as we were developing this, when we were talking about how we're gonna talk about uh, this, I used to work in the news industry for many years. And so uh, that was, I could immediately see the use case for that. But um, bringing up a concert is really interesting because you know we are seeing a lot more companies um, that are either wholly or significantly using content that has been crowdsourced um, you know, from a social media standpoint, right? Like social media marketing and, and kind of getting a sense for what's happening on the ground and, and so forth. I think how you described it, it kind of perfectly illustrates how something like this could make something like that a lot easier to work with. Absolutely. So uh, if you're familiar with Bebop, you'll notice that there's a, a the project section, Bebop projects, right? Essentially, this is a drive mount uh, on your workstation that you can receive content into. So it's essentially plugging in uh, a USB drive and, and you, know, you have storage associated with your workstation. Uh, so when you are in the Bebop environment, you have your workstations, right? Adobe, Premiere, Maya, Blender, Nuke, those kind of uh, flavors of workstations. And all these have shared storage to them. And on top of that shared storage um, are our collaboration services, uh, starting with Bebop projects. Bebop projects are just kind of the logical separation on your storage, right? So you can separate it for a concert project, right? Or a trailer or a, a webinar, right? So anything you want to separate into. So let's start with a project. Today I'm going to work on a Bebop Link project, a Bebop Link webinar. And I am going to work on that in the LA region. Bebop Link web. So I'm just quickly creating a project and give it a drive letter W. And now my project is ready. And the background is getting spun up and there you go, right? Zero gigabytes ready to host content. So let's go into that project. Now uh, this logical uh, group is now able to receive content from anywhere, right? So traditionally we had, you know, we can receive content from GCP, uh, Azure or S3, right? From your Google uh, object storage uh, or the AWS S3 object storage, Azure and things like that. Uh, but now, we have a nice way to add a link, uh, a Bebop link that you can send to somebody and start receiving content. So let's create a first link. Let me open a public wide open link to get content from everyone. So let's, as simple as that, the link's created, but I wanna drop it into the right place, right? I don't want it to go everywhere. So let's make a specific folder that goes into public. Right, so now in my Bebop, workstation when I mount this project, all that content will go in there. And I can restrict it, right? I can say, just send me JPEGs, don't send me anything else, or you know what, just send me MP4s or iPhone contact, or I can say, you know what, I'll accept anything. I can restrict it to, you know, 500 uh, gigabytes, or, you know, really have uh, controls over how much content's coming in. I only want two files, because I only expect two files to come in. If I send somebody a VFX house to send me a logo sting, right? I only expect one file to come in. So we can have some controls over how content comes in. If I set it to zero, you know, it's infinite. Hi, everyone. Uh, images or video. 
So I will send everyone this link. Please keep it clean. We're on a webinar. <laughs> Simple as that. This is a link. I'll post it in our chat window. Actually, uh, Brian, would you mind posting the chat window? I... Oh, never mind. I found it. Got it. So now everyone should have that link. So go ahead and drop a few files. Like send me an image, send me a video, keep it clean. And let's uh, set up the other things. So now you can kind of orchestrate your production, right? Now I can say, while that content is coming in from our webinar, our concert, mm -hmm. right? I can say, let's, I, need, I need some VFX work done. Like I need some cool shots to come in, right? So let me add a VFX drop link, right? And uh, one thing I'll do is I'm gonna protect this link. I'm gonna make sure only Bebop users that have a Bebop login can send me that content. So now this is protected. If somebody goes to this link and tries to send something, they'll ask you to log in first, right? Con contrast to the public link that's wide open, you're ready to go and somebody can send in content. So let me just upload one of my contents, Batman, if that's any surprise to my Bebop family. So here's all the files dropped right into my workstation that quickly, right? And in the meantime, I'm pretty sure um, I'm going to send some of these files to uh, to Brian to help me get some VFX work in. I can also send my sound engineers uh, a drop link that's specific to sound only, right? So create a new path. I'm going to say all these files I want to go into my sounds folder, right? So now all the links, this link will only send sounds, please. Aha, but I missed something in my VFX. I didn't add a path. That means it's going to get dropped right into the root folder. So let's fix that. Really easy to fix that. Create a new folder, VFX. <clears throat> and now where that's easy, everything will get dropped in here. Mm -hmm. but drops only, please. Done. And this is all real time, right? So if I need to make a quick change and I realize, oh man, sound is not protected, let's at least put a password in here. Okay. Actually, let's go here, right? So this is an open link now. Oh man, totally wide open, right? Let's fix that. So let's add a protected link. I'll just keep it simple, sounds, save. Now if we go back to that, there you go. Now you gotta put in a password to get in there. And the really cool part is if you have a Bebop login, you have 2FA associated with this as well, right? So you have to not only enter your username and password, you have to go through a 2FA multi-factor authentication process uh, where you get a code on your phone to actually get content in. So there you go, our production set up. Let's, uh, let's start going into our workstation and start seeing content come in. Hopefully you guys have already uploaded a few things. Now we're gonna go all the way to downtown LA right next to Patrick's house. It's right outside him. <laughs> we're in downtown LA and now I am gonna refresh this. And there's my new project. I'm gonna mount that. Here's my public link. There you go. People have already started sending in content. <laughs> Late night, last night, Brian. Awesome. So here's the Batman files that we sent in. All right. Here's a small file background. So really nice content coming in from all over the world. So that, that's kind of like the way you get content into uh, the Bebop workstation. That's awesome. So let me start diving into some more stuff. Give me one second. I believe there was a question, if we can get to that question in the meantime. Yes. Screen share back into the screen share. Sorry, sometimes Zoom uh, overtakes my keyboard, so I have to go back and fix that. So now we're in here, all the content is here. The sound, uh, Brian, could you send me some fun sounds that I can edit to on this? And we'll leave it right here to see how real time this is while Brian uh, grabs a few sounds and sets up his logic board, starts creating some beats. <laughs> now he's just dragging a file, that's all he's doing. <laughs> in a few seconds, we'll start seeing sounds coming in. 
There you go. New sound just came That's in. That's awesome. Sweet. Right? In real time. So let me log into Premiere in the meantime and start setting up my project because I actually want to edit this. Hey, Brian, while we're waiting for the Premiere to set up, could you uh, send me some VFX shots? I can maybe apply some light leaks on top of this to make it fun. Sure, I'll get this over to you right now. <clears throat> cool. In the meantime, I'll leave this open so you can kind of see that happening. And I am going to launch a new project. Move that over to the new drive I'm working on. Start folder two, just a simple project name. And let's import those cool shots that came in, all the sample media that you guys uploaded. Web, let's bring in our public shots. Let's bring in our sounds. Batman 3 is not supported. Batman will not be. Okay. There you go, Brian's sending in all the VFX shots in real time as I'm working on this production, which is really cool. Super cool. Sounds, VFX. How cool was that? My production is ready to be edited. Yeah. Collaboration from around the world. So let's edit it, right? Put in Batman here. Pretty simple, boring. Put a little effect. Already so dramatic. <laughs> right. So actually add in a little Mogurt, a little effect on the side over here. This is where I'm in my Zen spot, just editing. Woohoo! Episode one. Star Wars. Episode three is my favorite. All right, so we got a little we got blink going. Let's take some VFX uh, work that Brian sent over. The light leaks. Nice. Go ahead and uh, change our opacity to screen. Already so dramatic, right? So really cool VFX stuff from Brian. Let's go ahead and apply this everywhere. And you can see how fluid this is just working in the cloud. Our light leaks are applied. We need sound, right? So let's apply the sound. Brian, that sound does not work. Can we make this more fun? <laughs> Can we please make this a little more fun? <laughs> Batman's a little mad, Brian. We gotta fix this. So let's have Brian send in a new file. Got a new one for you. There you go. <laughs> file came in. Let's apply this new file. No, no, Brian. We're not. <laughs> Please, you're killing me here. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's uh, working at Bebop, I'm used to, to being excited at, at, at seeing real-time collaboration, but this is, this is like next level stuff because the files are bouncing around as well. You know what I mean? It's not like you're just working on the same uh, material at the same time in two different places. You're actually transferring the media um, just as quickly and just as efficiently. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what, um, all right, let's see. Brian, is, I'm hoping this is the right one. You want Batman, I gotta be Batman. Yeah. There you go. Our production's done. Our first production using Bebop Link. In the Excellent. Cloud. And the real <laughs> we're done. Let's export this file. And you might be asking, what do I do with the exported file? I'll let Patrick answer some of our roadmap items where you can imagine if we can file then, we can shortly send them out, right, Patrick? Very, very shortly. So <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, Bebop Link does kind of pave the way for future uh, uh, development. Um, so yeah, absolutely, as Sim was alluding to, 
uh, if you can upload files into Bebop. Can you also use Bebop link to then share completed and rendered projects? And so the answer is not now, but in the very short future. Uh, that's certainly something that we have planned. So that's Bebop link. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I think there are some questions. Uh, oh, great question. Uh, how is the incoming content scanned for malicious activity, right? Uh, that's a big thing. Um, so uh, the, the great part is the underlying host uh, for this is Rocket. And Rocket's already set up to have uh, not only an encrypted transfer, but we can have a sandbox environment where we can drop these files in before they get to the workstation, so they get scanned, right? Uh, we can apply a nice AI to it as well uh, to make sure you're not getting malicious content, adult content, and things like that. Uh, those are all managed services that, that we can deploy on top of the, uh, the content that's coming in. Uh, and in the future, like, uh, you know, we have roadmap items to, to make this more, even more secure um, and, and more streamlined for the editor. Uh, you know, there's a name I have, it's called Droplets. Uh, it's a working name, but essentially those are the things that we can attach to the Bebop links uh, to make them, to have more functionality. Uh, right now we can, we can provide that through our managed services. Today. Well, and I think one of the points you were underscoring um, with that, Sim, is just that, you know, the, we inherently designed this to be as flexible as possible for what the customer needs it to do, right? So in terms of um, how they want to set up their environment, who they want to give the links to, how they're going to, you know, it, it, really, it really does allow for an enormous amount of flexibility in terms of what kind of company it is, what kind of production it is. Um, and, and what kind of footage they're expecting, right? Oh, you're on mute. Uh, it plays in really nicely for the broadcast workflow, right? Like I, came, I come from the world of sports broadcast, so, uh, you know, uh, shooting for the Dodgers, Lakers, and, and, and Clippers. And uh, we had so much content, like, man, Kobe was surrounded by at least 25 to 30 uh, journalists just around him with iPhones and Samsung phones and Canon 5Ds and like, you know, broadcast cameras. That's a lot of content, right? Now everybody's just running to their media rooms to do that. But now, you know, we could flip that easily, go to a Bebop workstation, upload this stuff and you're good to go, right? Like, so yeah. let's just start editing. Let's get the, all that content in, get the story out. So for, for the, the, for the uh, journalists, uh, this is a this is a great use case, and and for the everyday, everyday editor as well, right? Like they, we want it opens up collaboration. It opens up worldwide collaboration. Like yeah. somebody in uh, in India, Singapore, other side of the world can really give you some really sick, uh, VFX shots securely, mm -hmm. right? You can keep your entire um, video here, send them a frame to be edited on with a watermark, and you know they send back. Uh, files to you in a secure manner. And, and there's a great audit trail, which I, I forgot to get to, but because Rocket is the underlying, uh, the framework for all this, you, you get that um, you get that transfer activity kind of baked into this. So you, you start seeing how content is coming in. So let me just bring yeah. that up. Transfer logs, last 10 minutes, last hour, drop link, or beep up link. And here's all the content that was sent. Look, Brian logged in, Brian sent everything. We have the exact files that were sent in, right? Anonymous, right? If you, if you have a public link, all the anonymous links are coming in as well. So it was really good content tracking. We have a really good ledger and, and can tell you who sent what from where, which IP and things like that. Uh, white listing to a specific IP is another security parameter they can add on to this as well. That's awesome. All right, cool. Well, we're coming up on uh, on our conclusion. Uh, this has been really exciting, as as Sim and Patrick and Brian know. I've I've been really wowed by this for for uh, ever since I I first saw the demo of it, and it's um it's super exciting because really from from that broad standpoint, I think Patrick you alluded to it at the beginning. You know, Bebop. Um, we are many things, but we are first and foremost a company that really has always. Um, our mission has always been to enable collaboration and creativity for for uh, creatives, for editors, visual effects artists, and the whole nine. And um, this is such an exciting elevation of of what we already did uh, that I just I can't wait for it to get out into the market and and to get used more and um, and to see what direction this takes because I could see this having a really transformative effect on on post. Um, cool. So. Uh, you thank you. Finish this video. I just want to see it one more time. That's okay. Sure. Okay. The last.
last shot I need to fix, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a, it's been really cool guys. I think this really opens up uh, the collaboration world. It really opens up uh, you know, how you can quickly edit and get to things. Um, and I look forward to showing the new stuff that'll come on our roadmap. Awesome. Well, Patrick, Brian, Sim, thank you guys for, uh, for joining us. Uh, and again, this is John Conroy. Thanks for joining us for uh, Bebop Technologies, The New Normal. Uh, we do this every Wednesday afternoon Pacific time, uh, always on different topics. Uh, and we will see you next week. Thanks for joining us.